let's talk breakup songs. For those of you in the room who have experienced a breakup, I'm sure you know this. There's always at least one song, just one song that, that hits different, that we set to repeat. It becomes this, this anthem of our emotions to have a good cry or belt it out from deep inside. Like, don't deny it because you know what I'm talking about. Like, think about, think about this one, for instance. Did this one happen to make your playlist? Tell all your friends that I'm crazy and drive you mad that I'm such a stalker, a watcher, a psychopath. And tell them you hate me and dated me just for laughs. So why do you call me and tell me you want me back, you maniac? I mean, I mean, seriously, so good. Uh, or maybe a little more emotion here from our Olivia. It took you two weeks to go off and date her. Guess you didn't cheat, but you're still a traitor. Mm, I'm telling you, like, I mean, we feel these, right? Or I have a feeling that this one, maybe you wouldn't admit it, but it made everyone's playlist. And I... to hear him sing that one not gonna lie that was ah see i'm telling you like these songs like they do something for us right like whether or not you've experienced a breakup like we feel something and it's just like we've been talking about there's this expression of emotion that just uniquely happens within music and see the psalms they do a similar thing for us we're continuing in our series called playlist and as we look at the songs of david and other writers. And really, the, these songs give us this glimpse into how we can talk to God, express our emotions, whatever they are. They give us this freedom to feel what maybe we're afraid to feel. So tonight, it's not, it's not breakup songs necessarily, but it is an emotion that we feel pretty strongly when a breakup does happen. It's loneliness. And I can confidently say, like this is not a foreign feeling for most all of us. Because loneliness, it, it doesn't just mean alone or solitude. It's this feeling like, like no one understands me, like God doesn't love me, like I'm not worthy of anything, like I don't have enough faith. Like maybe it seems like people, like they don't like me or I just can't fit in or find a place to belong. Like there's so much wrapped up in this loneliness and it can feel empty, desperate, and so isolating. And so no matter how many people are around, it can still be there. And many of you, you feel that in this room right now. You know exactly what I'm describing. You're surrounded by people, but you're alone. And so if that's you right now, or you've been there, like lean in, because God has something so cool for us tonight. The Psalms show us a lot about the heart of God toward his own in the midst of dark feelings. It's not hopeless like it may seem. And now if you can't relate at this point, unfortunately, this is not a feeling that tends to ex escape anyone. So just lean in because it might not be your season right now, but it might be one day. Or maybe you can walk with someone who is there right now. See, no one's left out here. Ironically, no one's alone in feeling alone. So go ahead and turn with me in your Bible to Psalm 69. David is writing here and he's describing how he's feeling. And there's this, there's this just heaviness to it. So let's start reading in verse one. Save me, O God, for the waters have come up to my neck. I sink in deep mire where there is no foothold. I have come into deep waters and the flood sweeps over me. I am weary with crying out. My throat is parched, my eyes grow dim with waiting for my God. See, David is hurting. He's describing feeling like he's, like he's drowning with no way out. He's tired and he feels like God just isn't responding. And he goes on the next few verses to describe how, how his own sin has caused him to feel even more isolated and alone. And verse eight, it says, I have become a stranger to my brothers, an alien to my mother's sons. 
So we have David here, he's crying out to God, he's feeling overwhelmed, like everyone has abandoned him. And on top of it, he's working through feeling even more alone for his own mistakes. Does this feel relatable at all? Those seasons in life where you feel alone and then you're beating yourself up for making yourself feel even more alone? Yeah, like loneliness can feel just like this. This isolation that feels unending. And so David continues on to describe these, these overwhelming feelings for, get this, the next 26 verses. Yeah, you heard me. Like for a total of 29 verses, David is crying out to God. And let's not miss this because this is the first thing I want us to notice about this psalm. It's this, it teaches us to not shy away from our feelings. Tanner talked about this a little bit, but David, he, he doesn't shy away from expressing these things to God. He lays it all out there, true or not. He shares the depths of himself with God and he lays it out there. And this is huge because I, I think there's this tendency in us to deny our feelings of loneliness. We use distractions, busyness to try to ignore what's happening and not deal with what's going on beneath the surface. We use social media, school, sports, work, empty relationships, TV shows, food, clothes, status, and so much more to mask what's going on. And I'll tell you, like that's the most isolating thing you could ever do. You can convince yourself of almost anything in isolation. So put down the phone, set aside time, feel, face what's happening. See, society has created this norm where, where there's never silence or time. And the cause of our feeling like this, it, it's everyone else. It's not anything going on with me. And that lack of space, it makes it so hard to actually work through anything that's going on in our hearts and in our lives. So just as this Psalm shows us, set aside time, get quiet, let yourself feel all the feelings you bottle up for later or you try to put on someone else. So the second thing to notice is what is what David does with these feelings. Because if you didn't notice, like this is a prayer. He's not just spewing out empty words, ranting on TikTok or bottling it up. He's, he's talking to the God of the universe. So that second thing is he cries out to God. Again, for 29 verses, he's just being real with God on where he is. He's saying all the things that God already knows because God knows our hearts, but there is such a connection that happens with God, this trust that we build with him as we're honest with where we are. So with that in mind, I want us to continue reading in verse 29 and see how David continues on. But I am afflicted and in pain. Let your salvation, O God, set me on high. I I love this, like he is in pain, he's hurting. And as he just ran it on for all of these verses, here's the turn, but God, you've saved me. Let it give me hope. Like, wow, like this, like this is what we need to be reminded of. This is what we talk about so often. And this is our third point. It's what it looks like to preach the truth to yourself. Like what is actually scripturally true. And for us, that's who God is and who he says we are. We see that the most clearly through the gospel. By the way, that's where we get this saying of like, let's preach the gospel to yourself. And like, we mean it. See, look, that Jesus came. He lived the perfect life. He died on the cross for our sins. But he, but he didn't stay dead. He was raised to life, defeating death and evil and sin. And for those who have trusted in him, he saved us. And that's the hope he's talking about, that God saves. He's our salvation. He's saying, oh, like, whatever it is that's going on, like, this hurts. This world, these feelings, it's overwhelming. It hurts. But God, you who are faithful, you are my hope. So let's continue in verse 30. I will praise the name of God with a song. I will magnify him with thanksgiving. This will please the Lord more than an ox or a bull with horns or hooves, meaning offerings. When the humble see it, they will be glad. You who seek God, let your hearts revive. For the Lord hears the needy and does not despise his own people. 
who are prisoners. David closes this psalm in praise. We see this so often throughout the Psalms, this formula over and over that God, that, that David doesn't just do this one time, it's this lifestyle that happens. We don't just walk through these three steps I've given you and suddenly feel like just awesome and light and like everything is great. No, like he doesn't say that. David surely feels what he's expressed, but he also knows what is true, that God is faithful, that he saved us that he's near. And then he uses these things as a reminder in a season where he doesn't feel like it's true. Because if you haven't gathered this from the psalm so far, like our feelings, they often don't line up with what's true. So let's sum this up. We feel, we cry out to God, and we speak the truth of the gospel to ourselves. And just as Romans 5, 8 says, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He met us in our brokenness. He came down to us. He sought out the lonely. Like this may feel really elementary for some of you, but if we're really honest, it's not. Like this is not an easy thing to do, especially in the midst of heavy feelings where we feel pretty hopeless. So just like when we feel a little crazy, maybe after a breakup, feelings are all out of whack and some stupid songs just help us feel better, even more so, let the truth of scripture speak into your loneliness and help you define what is true.